Okay, but show them also the iPhone, okay? The so iPhone, the show iPhone that. Too. The mockups? Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll show them iPhone 14 mockups with iOS 16 running on it, or at least what I want out of iOS 16. Good. All right. All right, so Apple's big developers conference starts on June 6th. That's coming up fast, isn't it? We're almost guaranteed to see a new version of iOS, macOS, and watchOS, but did you hear? There's evidence that the Apple headset might work with iOS 16. Yeah, so let's talk all about it. How do we know that there will be updates to iOS, macOS, and other software? Well, history. The event in June is called Worldwide Developers Conference, so it's for developers. Developers need to know what features they can take advantage of to make their apps. We've also gotten iOS updates at WWDC every year since 2013, so there's that track record. Sometimes we get hardware announcements because sometimes developers need to know what their apps are running on. The most recent hardware we've gotten was the Mac Pro in 2019. Before then was the 2017 introductions of the iMac Pro and HomePod. That being said, we're going to try our best to figure out what we can expect at WWDC using the power of many reports from a lot of different sources. This is the part of the show where I say none of what you're about to hear has been officially confirmed by Apple. If Apple did confirm this stuff, the title of this video would have been very, very different. So let's start with iOS 16. What could possibly be new about it? We've got this report by Mark Gurman at Bloomberg. He says we could be getting fairly significant enhancements across the board, including an update to notifications and new health tracking features. As for looks, Gurman says he's not expecting an end-to-end -end redesign of iOS's interface. You know, the one that's been pretty much the same since iOS 7? So I wanna talk a little bit about a redesign of iOS. Patrick Holland over at CNET did a piece for his wish list on iOS. I've got a few thoughts. So multitasking on an iPhone should be a thing. You can do it on iPad OS. You got these big, huge phones. You got the Pro Maxes, you got the Max phones, right? Why can't we have two apps up at once? It seems like this can be done in software. You can do it on the iPad mini, which isn't that much bigger than an iPhone. That should happen. Always on display. Patrick mentioned this in his video. I still cannot believe iPhones don't have this. This can be done in software. It's on the watch. Why can't it be on your actual phone? Then the home screen and control. Look, Apple has thrown people a bone. You can put your widgets on there, but you can't change the grid. If you want like just a widget and nothing on there, you have to make sure your apps are in this grid. It's kind of, it's kind of a constraint. I don't think Apple needs to do that anymore. So maybe with iOS 16, you have the ability to like make your homepages the way you want. And my thing, the thing I want, one thing that actually could make me even maybe switch to an iPhone, changing my default apps. Let me use Google Maps for maps. I know I can pick my own mail and I can pick my own browser, but how about I can pick my default apps for everything? Why not? The hardware is great, the camera's great. Just let people pick the apps they want. Back to German's report. He says that the beta versions of iOS 16 are quote, chock full of references, end quote, to the Apple headset and its interactions with the iPhone. German thinks that this means the much rumored Apple augmented reality headset will launch during the iOS 16 cycle. That would start in June of this year and last until iOS 17 in the fall of 2023. Does that mean we're seeing the Apple headset at WWDC? I don't know the answer to that, but we've been hearing about this headset for years. Way back in 2018, CNET had an exclusive up that said the company is working on a headset capable of running both AR and VR technology. Plans so far call for an 8K display for each eye and it would be untethered from a computer or smartphone. Now back then, the release date was slated for 2020. So stuff happened and we don't have this headset yet. German's April 2022 report said that Apple had big plans to use WWDC 2022 as the launch for the headset. However, the announcement could come by the end of 2022 or sometime in 2023. Then this happened. A new Bloomberg report by German with the headline, Apple shows headset to board in sign of progress on key project. I know, right? He's got even more details about what this headset would be like. The headset would be running on Apple's Mac class silicon. There would be ultra high resolution screens. The first model would have both virtual reality and augmented reality. This particular model has been in development since 2015. German says that there are around a whopping 2000 people working on this project. 
The report also mentions a second headset that would be just augmented reality. German goes into lots of details about internal pushback when it came to the development of Apple's headset, particularly pushback from former design chief, Johnny Ive. Go check that out when you get a chance. So is the time right for Apple's headset to show up right now? I mean, look, Apple's been working on AR for years, like lots of years. You've had AR kits, you have the ability to work with augmented reality objects in an iPhone or an iPad. So the idea of having a headset isn't that far off. Developers need to see hardware if they're gonna develop apps for that product. The question is whether the product is ready. It might not be ready, so I don't know if Apple's gonna give a preview of the device, but I don't think they're gonna have something for consumers to see for a long time. We should also be seeing a new version of watchOS. This would be watchOS 9. We turn again to the German. He says that Apple is planning a new low power mode that's designed to let the Apple Watch run some apps and features without using as much battery life. Will we get a new Apple Watch at this event? That's pretty unlikely. Usually new Apple Watches arrive in the fall. There's a chance we could get new Macs though. A Bloomberg report says that there are two new Macs coming in the middle of the year or early in the second half. That timing lines up quite nicely with WWDC, right? German says that there are other models being worked on, including an updated Mac Mini, a 24-inch iMac, and a new MacBook Pro to replace the old 13-inch model. The Elec said that Apple is working on a MacBook with OLED panels. The report said that Apple would remove the polarizers from the screens. That would help allow the panels to be flexible. Display supply chain consultants analyst Ross Young said something similar. He said that Apple is working on a foldable MacBook with a 20 inch display. Having trouble picturing something like that, let's show you this concept from Samsung. It's called the Galaxy Flex Note. It seems similar to what Apple could be working on. Young said that the MacBook could be used as a notebook with a full size on-screen keyboard when folded. It could also be used as a monitor when unfolded. What do I think of this? Look, I don't see Apple introducing anything hugely revolutionary until their entire Mac line is converted. Right now, we don't have an Apple Silicon Mac Pro. Okay, so once that's done, maybe then Apple will go ahead and go, new iMacs, new MacBook Pros, foldables. Until then, I don't see it happening. Apple is working on a couple of services according to reports. Services are always important since they give a company a steady source of revenue. A Bloomberg report from late 2021 says Apple is working on a way to break up payments. It says that the plan internally is called Apple Pay in 4. It would allow a person to buy something using Apple Pay on their device. Then the person would have the option to pay for that thing in four interest-free payments made over a period of time. There's also reports of Apple working on a subscription service for the iPhone and other hardware products. This would not be buying stuff on an installment plan. Instead, you'd subscribe to something like an iPhone. The German report said the company has discussed allowing users of the program to swap out their devices for new models when fresh hardware comes out. Neither of those payment services are official. Now, do I think Apple would unveil those kinds of things at WWDC? I think the timing is a little off for those kinds of announcements. I would think they'd be more at home at a consumer-focused event like the iPhone launch, likely in September. Okay, rapid fire time. What else could we see at WWDC? Apple should talk about the future where we don't have passwords anymore. Apple's a part of an organization called the FIDO Alliance. FIDO stands for Fast ID Online because they took the F from fast and the O from online and the id from ID. That's not the point. The FIDO Alliance also includes Microsoft and Google. Their mission is to create a common sign-in standard that does not use passwords. This kind of stuff seems like something Apple would talk to developers about at WWDC. There are rumors about new AirPods Pro, but WWDC seems like the wrong spot for that. Look for that in the fall as well. What about the Apple car? Somehow 2025 is the expected release date. You know, do you think we should do a whole video on the Apple car, maybe Apple AR, VR? Let me know in the comments. Let me know if you see me on the street. I'm Ayaz Akhtar and I'll see you online.